great morning, great morning. I've been talking over here without the words. But anyway, um, we thank God for once again for you joining us for this brief time of Bible searching of the scriptures. This morning I got up with the thought of let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So we're going to that scripture, praise God, and then we're going to Ecclesiastics. And uh, as I was studying and meditating on some things about not want to do anything that's offensive to God or to know what is God's will. What is the will of God? And the Lord gave me some insight concerning words with which you learned the other day. Words set things in motion. Not only my words, your, uh, my mother's words, my father's words, my neighborhood words, uh, the media words, uh, things that are being broadcast because it uh, uh, talks about the, the devil being the prince of the airway. So the airway words are being spoken all the time. Either they are profiting or they are destructive or they're healing or they're causing injuries uh, as, as darts. So we're going to pray and then we're going into this scripture. Father, we thank and praise you for this day which you have made. We thank you for the work that you've begun in us. You will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We yield our body, our soul, and spirit to you, praying your will, your way, and your word will be done in us, and through us, and for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. So Psalms uh, 19 verses 12 say, Who can understand the error of his ways? The error of understand where have you erred? Okay, and we're going to see a lot of times it's just an opinion. Just uh, uh, somebody said, well, what do you think about this? Uh, uh, what is your opinion? They want to hear from you. And therefore, we're going to see how that can be an error. Okay. Be cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous, you know, making being presumptuous in things. Do you know? He just presumptuously making a decision or uh, making a comment or doing something. Okay. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had marked over here Jeremiah 8, 4 through 7. Um, as the Lord, what have I done? Let's, let, me, let me go to that right quick. Because you, once you do a Bible for a while, you start making other little marks in it. Jeremiah the 8th chapter because we presumptuous sin keep that thou me from presumptuous sin and talking about my mouth uh, the 8th chapter verses 4 through how do we say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us lo certainly in vain made he it the pen of the scribes is in vain the wise men are ashamed they are dismayed and taken low. They have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. How do we say we are wise? That's what we feel. So that's what I mark for Jeremiah. Okay. We say we are wise. Yeah, the wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken low. They have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. Hallelujah. And this is a lot of time people say things because they feel... Uh, it's a man of God was talking Sunday based on what they feel or they have the knowledge, you know, or we was talking, even up talking about the medical thing, you know, people giving advice based on their level of understanding and things will come, new things will come and people will say, well, this is what I understand. But then we was talking Sunday Well, God is doing a new thing and he says, shall you not know it? Because it's clearly you have to be following, it says, the word of God. As we was talking this morning with Pastor Banks, and she went to Ecclesiastes. That's why we're going to Ecclesiastes now. She took us to Ecclesiastes about um, vowing and um, unto God. And where she was talking about vowing, it made me think about something as I read down in Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, that tied into that um, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in, in thy sight. Because we can get to a level of understanding and not really discern the signs and the times and the things or be presumptuous about things. Now, this is maybe just for me. 
Okay, so I'm seeking for a deeper. Lord, don't let me error with my tongue. So Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, verse 1 says, Keep thy foot when thou goest into the house of the Lord, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of his words, which took me to Ecclesiastes, which we're going to jump over there right quick, and we're going to go back to the fifth. Ecclesiastes, the tenth chapter, verse 12, and it says, The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him, swallow, swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool also is full of words, a man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? Talk about a fool, words going to swallow himself up. Going back to Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter. Now this is talk about when I say, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Going back to Ecclesiastes 5. When thou voweth a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Okay. We tied it this morning to marriage, but there's a lot of vows. Lord, if you do this, I'll do this here. There's, we're vowing all the time. We, we say, well, if you do this, I'm going to do that. It's not just about marriage. It could be about uh, uh, anything. You make a vow. Well, I Like people say, do you promise? Yeah, I promise. Promise is a vow. Okay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. I promise it. I made a vow. I promised you I would do this here, but I'm sorry. I, I, it was an error. I didn't mean it. It says, Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of your hands, of thine hands? So when you make a vow, it says it's better not to vow. And that means you could be, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. When I'm reading all this, it's so easy to get off course. Or don't even not even be on course. We talked this morning about the unregenerated man. He can't even understand the things of God. So you got to be born again and be led by the Spirit in the first place. To even be on the straight and narrow. Because we could be way off course. Way off course. By just saying things. And presumptuously saying things. And making vows. Not just marriage vows. Somebody said, well, do you promise? You promise to do this? Oh yeah, I promise. It's a vow. Okay. For the most, it says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? Because he heard you. Did you just promise some people that? Lord, have mercy. Forgive me for thoughts, words, and deeds. My God. And destroy the work of your hand. God, destroying the work of your hand because you done said something. You done made a vow. You done spoke something. You presumptuously put your two cents in there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy, Lord. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities. But fear God. So in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities. Speaking out of pride. Or some dreams, whatever, even in the dreams. Jesus, have mercy. But fear God. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and uh, violent perverting of judgment and justice in a providence, marvel not at the matter. Okay, so if you see the oppression of the poor and uh, violent perverting of judgment and justice in a providence or in a country or in a region, marvel not at the matter. Now, we got a lot to say about that. You know, we always got something to put our two cents in, what we think. 
okay? For he that is higher than the highest, who is higher than your president, higher than your kings of this earth, higher than the prophet, higher than all of them, he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there is higher than they. So God is higher than all of the people in authority. Moreover, the prophet of the earth, this is what the scripture said, is for all. Like, so I don't know why them people out there homeless. They is, and, and then we're going to find out. Now, we make statements about people in conditions because we're going to read on down the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes because we have something and they don't. It says, the prophet of the earth is for all, and the king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance will increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. What good is there to the owner thereof, saving, beholding of them with their eyes? What benefit is to you storing up all this stuff so you can look at it on paper or in storehouses or wherever? When he done told you that the profit of the earth is for all. Now, a lot of people say, well, what do I have to do with those poor people over there? I don't have nothing to do with them. Okay, he's talking about your words. Okay, he's hearing your words. It says, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much. But the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. When you get rich, you won't be able to sleep because you're going to try to figure out, I got this new car, I got this money, what's going to happen? You got to watch it. You got to watch it. You got to, and it tastes, okay? There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches keep kept for the owner thereof to their hurt. Riches kept to the owner thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail. And he begetteth a son and there is nothing in his hand. Which it says a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children. Not just storing it up. As he came forth of his mother's womb naked shall he return to go as he came, shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit has he that labors, that has labored for the wind? You done gathered up all this stuff and for just the wind, because you're not taking any of it with. Now this is the Lord, because you're always saying, about should I give, should I, you know, and, and you're always looking and, and meriting whether or not this person is worthy of your gifts, <laughs> worthy of their gifts. And then he said, you're just storing it up. When he said, the profit of the earth is for all. Okay, now this is examine because let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, what my heart is meditating on, be acceptable in thy sight. All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he has much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. So God said, the man who's stirring up all this stuff, he's eating in darkness, and he has sorrow and wrath with his sickness. That means his end is not going to be good. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and coming for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun, all the days of his life, which God gave him, for it is his portion. God gives you what you have. You did not come with it. It was a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. So those who are rich, you have been given a gift, but not to do, not to remember the poor. In fact, he tells us, um, Proverbs nineteen seven: 
when you talking about the poor, he that giveth to the poor, Proverbs uh, 19 and 7, okay? Now, this is, we talk about the meditation of our heart. 19 and 17. He that has pity upon the poor lendeth to the Lord, and that which he has given will God pay him again. That's what the scriptures say, okay? God going to pay you for giving to the poor. They think that's what they have philanthropists out there. Okay. Okay, so we're going back to Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, and closing out. It says, Then I beheld all the work. No, this, we're going back to the fifth chapter. Um, Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. For he shall not much remember the days of his life. You should not much remember the days of his life because God answers him in the joy of his heart. So you're not going to remember the stakes and all that, but what God is going to do is answer that man or respond to that man according to the joy of his heart. Now, the joy of your heart has to be God working in your heart. Now, a lot of times people have riches. Their heart is not joyful. They, in fact, they are miserable because they consider what's going to happen to this money, what's going to happen to my stuff, okay? But God is going to answer him. It says God answers him in the joy of his heart. So when let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Psalms 19, verse 12 and 14, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We're still talking about words and we're still talking about healing. Because you read Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, go and I'm going to give you these three scriptures. Now, this is just maybe for me, but I don't believe it's just for me. Because the man of God was talking Sunday about people making comments about things, talking about being presumptuous. It can, it says, destroy the work of your hands. Lord, have mercy. That means it's counted, all that work you did was for nothing. Go on and call something you said out your mouth. Lord, have mercy. Please pray for me. I'm praying for you. And we pray for each other, okay? Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord God. of Words, thoughts, deeds. Thank you, Jesus. That is contrary to you, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Help us to know the error of our ways. Oh, Help us to know, Lord. Lord, as the scripture, if we regard iniquity in our heart, you will not hear us. Lord, I pray for my issues, Lord. I pray. Every word I've said is contrary to you. Every deed, every thought. I pray for cleansing, ask you to forgive me. And for my sisters and brothers that listen to this YouTube channel, help us to examine ourselves in the light of your word. Hallelujah. And not to be presumptuous, Lord God. Thank you and praise you for this day. Set a watch before our mouth that we sin not with our tongue. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Okay, we're still on this pursuit. Okay, set a watch before my mouth, Lord, that I sin not. And Psalms 19 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Please continue to follow as we continue on that the word of God would cleanse us from presumptuous sin. I vowed, oh, I was an error. I'm sorry. Okay, you can say you're sorry, but it says you don't want God to get angry with your voice and it undo all the good work you've done because of one little word. Lord, have mercy. I read this stuff and I feel guilty. Lord, have mercy. Please continue to pray, continue to follow as we continue on in Jesus' name. Amen.